Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today we're going to do our best Gregor impression and get super nerdy with macros. Confession, I've not utilized the macro feature in Studio One at all, and it's been around for a long time. My friend Gregor has been hounding me to use it more because I'm such a nerd when it comes to efficiency outside of Studio One that I need to apply that to my work in Studio One. Let me explain. I've got a piece of software called Keyboard Maestro that I use on my Mac to automate all kinds of things. Like I have a keyboard shortcut that will turn my lights and camera on when it's time to do a video. I've got a shortcut that will export every one of my Apple Notes from a folder as a PDF into a folder for backup. Like it'll open one, export it, close it, open the next one, export it. That's a macro. It's a series. One keyboard shortcut can trigger a series of actions that I don't have to manually do. So I've got all kinds of situations where there's software that doesn't have a shortcut for a particular task that I want. So I'll create a macro that will literally open this, go to this menu, click on that when I press this keyboard shortcut. It's super nerdy, I know, but Studio One has that built in. So if you want to customize Studio One to be more efficient, to be more fun, to, to spend more time on music, music and less time clicking around finding menus and things like that. Studio One has that and you don't even need a third party piece of software to do it. It's built right into the software. So it's kind of a no brainer. So today's the day I come out of the stone ages and start using some macros in Studio One. I've prepared a list here. These are the macros that I want to create and it all has to do with mixing. Uh, we'll start there because that feels like an easy win for both you and me. Uh, the first six are the lists of plugins I want to be able to add from a keyboard shortcut. And the last three are my three different reverb sends that I use in every session. It'd be nice to be able to add that without having to do this number where I click and I scroll and I say I want spring reverb on this channel. It would be cool to be able to go kapoink and set that to a keyboard shortcut. Now for me, I'm going to set all of these to control one through zero. So control on the Mac isn't super used a lot. Uh, maybe it could be on your, if you're on a PC, maybe there's a different button you can use like the windows button, or maybe you don't use alt very much, or it, for me, control is the one I use because it's usually not mapped to anything else. So control one through zero across the top of the keyboard are going to be these plugins. So I'd encourage you to maybe stop the video and make your own list, or you can copy my list or add your own. By the way, these don't have to be just studio one plugins. They can be any third party plugin. You can just choose from a list. Uh, but then when you press a button, it will automatically add it. So how do we do this? Well, open up Studio One, obviously, and go to the macro organizer. There's two ways to get there. One is from here, this little robot looking fella. You can click on that and it'll bring up this uh, kind of a toolbar that has some of the most commonly used macros there. And you click on that wrench to open up the macro organizer. Easier way to do it is just come into the menu up here and go to burr, 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 right here. Macro organizer is right here. I've got that set to this weird backwards apostrophe shortcut. That's right below the, ex the escape key so I can get there quickly. Um, that's a kind of an example of a macro. That's more just a keyboard or shortcut, but let me show you what macros do. Let's make a new one for the first thing in our list, which is EQ. All right, so here's the window. Now this takes a little getting used to if you've not built macros on other pieces of software before, it's actually really easy. There are commands over here on the left side and here is the new macro we're creating on the right side. We come find our command and we add it to the macro. So we could literally have hit a button and 12 things happen if we want. We're not gonna go that crazy today. So we're gonna say, call this add pro, I'm just gonna call it pro EQ because we know we're adding it. And the group is gonna be just my initials so they'll all be grouped together. Um, description, I don't need that. So the first thing we need to find is how to add an insert. Add insert, we search, it pulls up two. One is add insert, which you might think is the right one, but that just pulls up a window for you to choose your insert. We wanna automate even that part of it. So we're gonna use add insert to selected channels. Boink, we add it over to the macro, boom. Now, if we double click on this, you'll notice if it has a three dot thing here, if we double click on it, or if we click this edit button, it'll give us some more options. So here is where we can choose what we want to do. So we can add an effects chain, which is like a preset group of effects, like my Empire 2020 that has Empire, Splitter, a bunch of effects. We can add those, or we can just add a device. In this instance, device means plugin. Um, that could be a little confusing. So I'm going to add Pro EQ, which is right here. And the preset I want to add is the default preset, which I've already set up. Boink, 
Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to add that, but I'd like to open it too. If we leave it as is, it'll just add an EQ there, and then we still have to double click to open it. Well, that's a waste of time. So we want to show the channel editor. So here we go, channel editor, we add that, and it's defaults to just showing it when I add that uh, macro. So we hit OK, we've saved this macro, we can come find it in the list here. But what we need to do next is come to keyboard shortcuts and assign that to an actual shortcut. I've assigned the shortcut option K to pull up my keyboard shortcuts to just magnify exponentially the nerd factor. But we come to keyboard shortcuts and we just search for what we just created. We just created something called Pro EQ. There it is. It's under the macro uh, section here, so we know that's the one we created. And it doesn't have a keyboard shortcut, so we're going to go Enter key, Control 1, Assign, Apply. Guess what? We just made our first macro. Let's come over to this drum bus here, and while it's selected, press Control 1. Boom. We added an EQ and we pulled it up. Now, as you can imagine, there's lots of variations here. We could have it set to bring up the high pass filter uh, preset of this plugin if we want. We could have a separate one for that. We could have it one preset for the default and then one macro for high pass filter, one macro for bottom snare. Like there's a lot of options here, uh, but I'm gonna stick with the default for now. You can get nuts with it if you want. So, for example, for that, if I wanted to have a second macro that just added a high pass filter, which is probably more useful than just adding a blank EQ, I could maybe make that shortcut control option one. Let's actually do that right now. New macro, HPF is the name, we'll add it to the group JG, and we'll do the same thing we did before. I probably could have just copied the previous one, but we're, we're in this now. Uh, insert, add insert to selected channels, boink. We're gonna make that insert a device called Pro EQ, and a preset called, I've got a preset already that adds a high pass filter at 100 hertz. You could pick whatever you want there. Uh, and in this one, maybe this one I don't want to show because it's just one that I just wanted to add it and be done with it. I don't want to have to close that window. So we won't do the show channel editor, which opens the plugin. So we'll just leave this like that. Come over to keyboard shortcuts. Let's see HPF, which stands for high pass filter. There it is. Let's make this control option one assign. And by the way, Studio One will let you know if that keyboard shortcut is already taken in Studio One, which is kind of helpful. I hit Apply, I hit OK. Now on this channel, I hit com Control Option One, boink, and check it out. Look, it's a high pass filter right there. Add one to the Symbols channel, that makes sense. Boink, we got a high pass filter. Very, very cool. So now we can do that without even having to open a plugin. It's like, oh, this needs to roll off at 100. Kaboink, now we've got it rolled off in 100. Love that. All right, let's remove these. Now I want to show you how to, obviously, the just rinse and repeat for all the other items on the list. So the compressor, this is kind of the order that I want. EQ is my number one, kind of go-to, compressor second, fat channel third. I kind of think of fat channel as having three elements, like EQ compression and a high-pass filter, kind of. So three makes sense. I think I'll remember that. Distortion on four, because four sounds like distortion. Five, multiband dynamics, because it starts off as a five-band dynamic. That kind of made sense to me. VT1 on six, I have no reason for that. That was just the last one in the list. By the way, if you're a Sphere member, you get VT1. It's a really cool plugin. Let me show it to you. Um, it's basically uh, this really sick channel strip that has, I mean, look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, and you've got input controls, impedance controls. So you can kind of adjust kind of sort of a preamp tone there. Then the compressor, then a four-band EQ with an output level, it's it's really cool sounding piece. So I have that on a, on a macro as well. And then the last three are the room reverb, plate reverb, and spring reverb. Okay, insert rewind sound. <laughs> I was wrong. You can't set it up the way I have it here. So I've X'd it out. You can't have a macro that will send a channel to a different effects chain. Now the reason for that is most people don't use the exact same names for the effects chain and that's how you would have to trigger it is say send an effect, send this channel through the send section to the room reverb or the plate reverb or the spring reverb. Uh, those for me actually do stay the same almost all the time. The delays sometimes change. I've got a slapback delay, quarter note, and half note delay but then sometimes the quarter note turns into a dotted eighth note delay, and then the half note turns into a quarter note delay. So those names wouldn't stay the same, so having a macro that fires based on those names wouldn't work 
anyway because they change a lot. So this is actually something you don't have to do with a macro, but you do need to set up your keyboard shortcuts for. So open up your keyboard shortcuts and look for Add Send. That's already a keyboard shortcut in the console there. And we're going to call this one Control. We're going to assign this to Control Zero. That's the last one on the far right for me. Uh, assign, Apply, OK. Now here's how that's going to work. Let's go back to our drum channel here. Let's say we want to add the room reverb to our drum channel. I hit Control Zero, pulls up a menu, and then you can see, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it, it's got all the lists of both buses and effects chains here. I can click on that one, or the whole point of doing these macros is to maybe have our hands off the mouse, not, or at least not touch the mouse quite as much. So Control Zero, and then R. And check it out, it's selected room reverb. I hit Enter, now I've got a room reverb send. That doesn't save as much time as the earlier one where I'm adding different effects and different presets, but it is, I think, still handy. Like if I wanted a room reverb and I want to add my plate reverb to these vocals, boink, P, enter, right? Plate reverb here, boink, P, enter. It's kind of nice. Now I still have to go in and adjust the volumes here, but the default is generally in the ballpark for me. So that's not the worst thing in the world, but that's how you would do it with sends. Maybe we'll, We'll talk about maybe maybe there's a way we can have that be a little more customizable. But for now, the big thing is adding inserts, the most commonly used inserts and presets that we like onto channels without having to go scrolling here or scrolling over here and doing the drag and drop thing. If your session gets to be really big and you want to add this over here, like I I ran out of space with my trackpad. I couldn't even get it to the drum channel. Um, so now being able to just fire off any particular effects chain into my mix with a keyboard shortcut is pretty great. And remember, I want to add a high pass filter to these symbols. Bam! Oh, that's so cool. I love that. Uh, and so then the the send shortcut is the, it's honestly the same thing as clicking here. You click the plus sign, you type the letter P, it's the same thing, but you can do it with one less click. I'm honestly not sure if I'll use that a whole lot, but now we know at least how that would work. All right, thanks so much for watching and learning along with me. We're slightly, I'm slightly less of an idiot than I was at the beginning of this video, and that feels good. If you like this and you want to learn more, subscribe to the channel and go watch Gregor's videos because he's way less of an idiot than I am, uh, and you'll learn a lot from him. Thanks for watching. See ya.